for the multi-academy trust. But you're but responsible what, for multi-academy trusts, aren't you? The Department but, of Education, but right? But everybody has a different role. Right, no, but that's so, correct, so isn't the, it? You're, you're responsible for multi-academy yes, trusts. Yes, but the, so you are responsible for. I mean, to be honest, <laughs> everybody has different responsibilities. But you, right? Are you saying that you're not responsible for the safety of children in the classroom? Absolutely, I am. Which is why we took a completely different approach that we've ever taken, that we've taken, and actually that every other country has taken, and probably we've taken in our history. So we have uh, gone out directly to. to First of all, in 2018, we put warning notices out and asked the responsible bodies to do surveys. Then we put guidance out and said, look, you need to go and do guidance on RAC and tell us where the RAC is. And we didn't think it was going quickly enough. So we then took a more direct role, which is the first time we've done it, which is sending out questionnaires to 22,500 schools, arranging for surveyors to go in. So we've now contracted eight building survey companies and then arranging to mitigate, which is getting porter cabins in and getting the propping in. That's something that we don't usually do. Usually the local authorities or the multi-academy trust would do that. I'm not sure about talking about how the problem first emerged in 2018 is helping your argument. I mean, that's five years ago. The new evidence that came over the summer, which is why we changed the policy, is three cases that came up over the summer. Um, and and we first, one of them was actually in a commercial building. One of them was in an education setting outside of, uh, of our jurisdiction and the other one was a school in England. And what happened in those cases is there were ceilings that were assessed or would have been assessed as non-critical and they had a failing panel. So that was the new evidence we got. So that came over over the summer? Yes. There, there were was three different cases. Three different cases over the summer. You were aware of the summer that children were in this situation, right? Ceilings, dangerous, parents worried about the classrooms, concrete collapsing. Well, no. You it, went on a holiday in Spain from August the 25th to August the 31st. Was that a mistake? Well, when I went on holiday, I mean, to be honest, for the whole of the summer, um, obviously I had to sort out industrial action, then I had to do the A levels, then I had to do the GCSE. So the first time I could go on so holiday. So we should, be, we should that, feel sorry for Not you, at should. all. And I don't expect anyone to feel sorry for me. I'm certainly not getting that vibe from you. But. What um, I said uh, was, what I arranged was to go on holiday that day for my, well, for my parents, for my dad's birthday. Um, so it was a family occasion, we went. I said to them, right, um, we'd, we'd, we'd seen some of the evidence. We'd, we'd, I said, we have to speak to the inst Institution of Structural Engineers. I'll take my, I, I've always worked remotely. I mean, I've, you know, nearly 50 years before I got elected as an MP, I've always worked remotely. Uh, I, chaired, I chaired, I chaired, well, I re worked remotely on holiday as well. I chaired the gold uh, team from there every day, mm -hmm. um, made the decision. And I said, if, there's, if it looks like we're going to make a decision, that we, we get something back from, the, you know, from, the, from these investigations and it looks like we will um, do that, then I'll just come back. And I, I came back straight away. Well, actually, I came back straight away, but I had to wait a day because of the uh, uh, air traffic control okay. issue. Um, I just want to show you the reaction of a teacher in Leicester when Sky's Becky Johnson played her the video of you from earlier. Let's just listen to this, look at this teacher. Oh, my goodness. And that's our education secretary using that language for the situation. What I would like to say is, please, Gillian, come and see my school. I worked from the moment we got the notice of closure in order to make things work. I am horrified and disgusted by what I've just seen. What would you say to her? Um, I wasn't talking about her at all. She's done an amazing job and everybody in the schools. So when I said the people who've done an amazing job, it's the Department for Education, the local authorities who have responded to the questionnaire, which is 95% of them, the schools that have acted very quickly, the school leaders that have acted very quickly, the propping companies, the, um, the companies that have provided the porter cabins, they are the people who've done an amazing job. It was very difficult to make this decision. This wasn't a decision. I know that for parents and for children, it was a nightmare timing. But you only get the new evidence when it happens. It was a very difficult decision to make. I made the decision because I put the safety of children first. And the people who've done an amazing job are people like that, that you know, that head teacher there. What I am frustrated about, and it is frustrating, is we still have about five... So we've been trying to get these questionnaires since March 2022. This is the start of the process where we can then send surveyors in if RAC is identified. It's now become even more pertinent 
pregnant because we've now changed non-critical to um, needing mitigation straight away because of these incidents over the summer. Um, and about 5% of them haven't yet responded. And we've written time and time again. We've set up a call centre to call them. We've written again today um, and said they have to respond by the end of the week. And, you know, there's about... About 700, 750 schools. And we okay. need to get that because I want to make progress. I want to get children back into the classroom. Okay. I want to keep them safe. I've made a difficult decision. It is the right difficult decision. And I also... You said the language wasn't a problem. I also want to apologise to her because, like my mother, okay. she also didn't like the language. In the video, you also referred to everyone else who was sitting around on their... And I'm just wondering who you're talking about. You know, you, you say you're not talking about teachers. The last nine education secretaries. Oh, I definitely were wasn't all talk conservative. No. I, I wasn't talking. I wasn't talking about. I mean, including Nikki Morgan. You talk about Nikki Morgan? No, not at all. Not at all. But she's this... sitting around, not doing enough. Not at all. But this has been a problem since 1994. And, you know, the reality was, basically, it was the interview. Well, it was the interviewer. It was the interviewer. Should you have done a bit more? Well, there's always been an issue about... Um, we know there's an ageing school estate in the country and there have been successive, you know, whatever party, education secretaries, putting in bids to the Treasury saying we need more for, for capital building. And I'm sure Gillian will know, all education secretaries or whatever party know, the Treasury never says, yeah, have everything you've asked for. Yeah, on that, are you going to be pushing for the Treasury for this to be new money or are you happy for it to be taken from existing education budgets? Well, there's three parts to it. So the first is the mitigation, so the money's for for uh, the surveys, for the propping, for the yeah. uh, spare classrooms. Um, so we're paying for that, uh, for the DfE. The second is if there's any revenue funding. So some of the schools... By the way, the vast majority of schools in our country but, but, do not have look, RAC. I haven't got, I haven't the vast majority of kids went back today. Down. Are you, is this going to be from the existing education so the budget or are you asking for more money from Jeremy Hunt? So, what is going so on? So we have money for capital but, and... Come on, are, are, like, what's the answer? There's three parts of it. If you want to know the answer, because I can tell you in detail budgets, the first part of it is will come out of our capital budget because we have a capital budget yep, for repairs and budget, maintenance. Yep. And that will be for the uh, mitigation. Okay. Is there going to be money from the Treasury? The revenue funding will also come out of our budgets because right. we get budgets okay. every year for building... But what about the third part? For is building that maintenance. also school budget? The or third that part new... of it, we will have to put together how much refurbishment and how much of it is oh. new money. But the Treasury has said, and, and Jeremy uh, said yesterday when he was on uh, Laura Coonsberg's okay. show, that you do whatever it, it takes to keep uh, Sounds children to me safe. like it's going to be education, a pump for education budget. Well, no, because we have our capital okay. budget up until the end of this spending review session and would this you, will go beyond that. Would you apologise to parents and pupils who can't get back to school? Well, of course, I never wanted to make a decision. So you, you would say sorry to I, me? I said, actually, at the beginning, I did not want to put, put anything in the way of pupils going back to Will school. Will you apologise? But when, but when I got new evidence, I had to take action. Will you apologise? I had to take action, Sophie, so... No. I do not... Yeah, of course, I do... I don't... I'm really sorry that they're missing school. Not many of them are, by, by the mm -hmm. way. We've got 22,500 schools. We're talking about Thousands. 156, Thousands actually. Thousands of children. 156, no, not all of them. Most of them have been mitigated. So 52 have already been mitigated. 104, which will also be um, mitigated. But what I've said is I want to minimise the damage to children. But if you get evidence of a ceiling that comes to you towards the end of August and then you get it sort looked at and it looks like this was a non... It would have been non-critically assessed and a panel could go loose, that is information you have to act on. And by the way, politically, it's not been a very easy thing to act on because just, I didn't want to do this right at the beginning of term. I would have done anything not to, but I do think prioritising safety is the most important point and I wouldn't apologise for that. I just want to... There's so much I could talk to you about, but we're, we're running out of time. But just as a takeaway from the interview, do you think that some of the frustration is about the tone that you take? in these interviews, you know, when you're talking about, look, it's a small number of children, um, or when you're saying that, look, you know, we've been doing loads, we've been working really hard. I just like to really put things hard. in context. I just like to put things in context, because if you listen sometimes to the media, you'd think every school was closed with RAC. We've 22,500 schools. That. There's 156. We're talking about crumbling concrete that's been known about for decades and that is shutting schools because of a risk to life. That's what we're talking because about. Because of new evidence that came up over the summer where ceilings that had been assessed as non-critical 
Okay. A panel. That's the first time we have evidence of that. Now, what we have been doing is we've been searching for all of these cases. That's why we found a case in the commercial sector. We found a case in school in another country. I sent the engineers up there to look at it. We've been okay. actually actively searching for rats because I want to get this sorted. Okay. Because I want to keep children safe. That's the number one priority. And I think we have been very proactive now and we have put all of the information okay. together you know it is very unfortunate the timing and i really you know i it's the worst thing to to you know have the, any more impact on children okay. um you know they've had covid etc we will work to minimize it and we will make sure that most children are in school okay. as soon as possible thank you for coming on the show you've front up to the questions you've been on you've been here you've answered the questions thank you um Nikki Morgan, you were Education Secretary. What's your take on this? Well, I think this is every Secretary of State's worst nightmare. Again, doesn't matter, you know, which party they're from or anything else. You yourself have just said, Sophie, that this particular issue has been known about for, for decades, but it's been obvious that obviously you have an ageing uh, school estate, despite the fact there has been significant new building in the course of the last uh, decade or, or so. Uh, you know, it's just a fact that schools are going to, uh, going to age. Um, and actually, I think Gillian has taken the decision, which is the most... The worst thing would be for any Secretary of State to come on national television and have to say sorry for the injury, serious injury or, or worse, of a child or a teacher. Of course, with all of this, it's about the handling of, of this particular situation. And I will say what Julian perhaps uh, won't say, which is that the Treasury absolutely has to cover the costs of this now. And Jeremy Hunt, he said what he said yesterday about uh, we're going to spend all that it takes. He has to make it clear to the Treasury <clears throat> officials. And in the Treasury, there is a spending team that mirrors every department. And they will be saying for a long, long time, no, we're not going to give this money for capital that everyone's been asked for. Now, I'm afraid, the answer is yes. How much is it going to cost? What are the surveyors estimating? How quickly can we pay to get this sorted? OK, really interesting. Uh, we'll have more after the break. Thank you for being on the programme. Gillian Keegan, Education Secretary.